my name is David Braben. I'm the CEO and founder of Frontier Developments PLC, and we're here at Gamescom talking about Elite Dangerous. So here you see um, the game. Elite Dangerous is the fourth in a series of games um, of the Elite franchise since it started in 1984. It's really exciting for me to come back to this game after so long. Um, you know, it's, it's something that's mattered a lot to me, but more importantly, it was enabled uh, by crowdfunding through Kickstarter and then through our site, so it's fantastic. What you see here is we're seeing the Beta 1 build. This is, this is a, a, a combat-leaning ship called the Viper, just introduced in Beta 1. Um, and these ships are very, very customizable. The way the game works, for those who don't know, uh, there we see the Union Jack, is you start off with a very small ship, you earn money, um, and as you earn more money, you buy bigger ships, you can equip your ship, you can customize your ship. We're just going through the hard points there, um, different weapon categories of the ship. Actually, could you just go back to the outfitting? Um, the great thing is, you can choose what to fit on the hard points, whether it's a scanner, whether it's a gun, go for really big guns like we have here. Um, this is a class 3 beam laser in what we call a class 4 hard point. So you can sacrifice a little bit of size for the fact this is what we call a gimbaled weapon. So it can aim around, um, giving you um, more accuracy traded off for power. Um, you've seen the paint jobs. Here we have a Union Jack paint job. Um, so if we now look at um, perhaps getting taking on a mission, um, so the idea is you can do what you like in the game with your ship. Um, this is working for someone else. We'd, we'd look at this one. For example, a place called um, a parlor, which is reasonably nearby. We can take um, some medicines there. So let's accept this. And then look at the galaxy to see where it is. Now, one of the... Um, great things about Elite Dangerous is we've modelled our entire galaxy here. Here we can see the local neighbourhood, um, we can see this is in the night sky viewed from Sol, all of these stars fall in the constellation of Bootis. Uh, you see I Bootis there, Erinin, and now we're focused on uh, Aulin, which is where we are at the moment, and Apala, which is where we've got to go. You can see all the dotted lines, those are jumps that we can make through hyperspace with our ship. But also, as we see, all of these star systems are real systems. We've modelled the entire galaxy. Um, we've typed in some 160,000 star systems, the real stars in the night sky. You can see them there. There are something like six or 7,000 stars that are visible to the naked eye. Uh, the rest are visible to telescopes. All of the stars in the star catalogues around, we have included. Um, beyond that, as you zoom out, you can see we've modelled the entire galaxy. The further out you go, the more stars we have made up procedurally that fit, fit the mass densities, things like that. Even with Hubble, we can only see the faint um, M-class red stars up to about 40 or 50 light years. And their numbers appear to tail off and they just disappear into the sort of the galactic mist. But we know they're there because of their mass. Um, and so we've modelled those procedurally. These are all real ones that you can see here. These are all real stars in the night sky. Um, with planets, we've included all of the um, planets that we know about, so-called exoplanets, and then the rest we've generated based on real theories. And so we're very, very proud of what we've got here. It may not matter to everybody, but it means every dot in the night sky you can actually visit. So um, let's look also at the trade routes. So here we see this sort of garish array of colours showing all the different, this is sort of real data of trades being made between the systems. Um, we can turn off various items, you can see, so um, if, for example, we're going from a place uh, with sort of food, you can see where is exporting, where is importing. So if food's cheap here, we can work out where we should take it. You can also look at the subcategories here and sort of turn them on and off to sort of study what you should do. Now, the beauty with this game is we're making it for ourselves. We want, certainly I want, this level of detail. We sort of see manufacturer goods are basically red, drone goods basically green um, you know that you can see the economy of a place just by looking at it and you get used to these things so okay launching from the starport each starport rotates to give artificial gravity and in this central area as we take off um, the gravity is only 0.1 g that's quite low and the great thing is it means docking is quite safe your ship lands quite gently but also a, a fit human adult could pick up a ton weight and lift it over their head because it weighs so much less, even though it's the same mass in this uh, environment. Okay, so we're launching out through this slot. 
in our Viper. And as we turn to look back at the system, you see that it's rotating, you see that inner area where we were with the ships. But as we get further out, you can also see that this is this giant outer ring that we're looking at now. Um, as we fly closer, closer to it, you know, because of the direction of the, the sun, it's, it's largely in shadow. But as we fly closer to it, you see there's a huge area. You see the sort of detail beneath it. That total area um, works out as roughly the same, so apparently someone calculated as the playable area of GTA 4. You know, it's a huge volume of space um, to explore. Um, and as you see, that, that outer, outer space there is all rotating such that it's one Earth gravity. So it would be a very comfortable place to live. So as we head off to Opala now, we sort of cross in front of the station, um, we start to explore this really great galaxy that we've got before. As we can sort of see the Milky Way in the right, but that's real data. Um, to get it to match the night sky, we actually added more and more dust until it looked about right. Um, What's great about that is um, we've actually, we're possibly one of the few, if not only people, to collate all that star data and actually draw the night sky from first principles and see what it looks like. When we first did it, it was too bright. You can see the galaxy was too bright and too uniform, so we added the dust to make it match. And so, we, we, you know, we have real reasons to do that. So here we are, arrived in Aulin. You can sort of see the magnetic fields we're modelling, all the surface detail there on the star. <coughs> oh, excuse me, all very, very slowly animating. That's the sort of real speed it, it, it would go at. And now we're moving to our, um, towards our destination, which orbits Aulin slightly further out. We can see that there are fewer stars visible here because of the bright, brightness of the night sky, so your canopy is dimmed down. Now what's wonderful here as we build, the game is now in beta 1, so we're gradually building out more and more content that tells more and more stories. There, there, there is a lot more to come. Um, you know, we've built a stage at a time, firstly adding the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, the combat, building out the multiplayer and all of, of that side of it. Um, oh, now this is interesting. So we have been um, stopped en route here. Now, when you travel, we travel with something called Super Cruise, which is faster than light travel. You can fly around the solar systems, and you realise just how vast the solar system is, any s stellar system. But anyway, we, one of the things you can do when you're travelling like this is there's something we call being interdicted, which is where you're pulled out of hyperspace, usually to be attacked by a pirate. But what we can see here is actually an encounter where pirates are already attacking three big trading ships. Uh, these are things we call the Lacon Type 9, which is a sort of giant space truck. So absolutely huge three-storey cargo, um, cargo bay inside. There you see it sort of up close. Glowing orange because that's how it ditches heat. We have a heat mechanic in space. You can see that John here, who's flying, has directed a lot of his, heat, uh, his power to the weapons. So you can sort of configure the ship as you go. Um, but a problem in space is ships get hotter and hotter and the scanner in the middle of the screen is showing other ships but it's showing them by their emissions, by their radiation. Because a real life problem in space, even for the space station now, is dumping heat. Um, as we can see here, our heat has currently reached over 100%, so we, the, the gauge on the, the left. So there are various things we can do to do that, but that's because we've been using these weapons a great deal. And the, our ship will also be glowing orange, so very, very visible on the scanner. But we can do something like firing a heat sink which cools the ship down and then makes us much less visible to the other ships. But now the dilemma we've got here, which is how you, you see the game start to unfold, is we could side with the pirates, which would give us a reputation for piracy, but then we could enjoy, enjoy the rich pickings of those three trading ships, because they have way more cargo than those other three pirates could carry. Or we could protect the traders and take out the pirates, go for a good reputation, or we could just sit and wait and then choose to see who wins and then attack them once their uh, shields are down. So the, the, the great thing here is you can play the game how you like. You know, as the world unfolds and changes um, dynamically, you can take more and more part in it. You see there, we get a bounty for taking out that ship. And the, the great thing there is those bounties add up to a lot of money and your reputation bills for taking out pirates. You know, we've seen an awful lot of players cooperating 
in this way, sort of vigilantism against the pirates, which I think is a really, really good thing. Um, as, as we gradually build the game out. So, sort of summing up, we're very proud of where we are. We've just started beta, and the game is really coming together. We've got more and more people joining us every day. You know, if you're interested, come along. If you're already um, in the game, um, excellent. I'll see you in combat at some point. So, thank you very much for listening. Um, signing off now.